What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to dynamically highlight a specific series in a line chart. As you can see on the screen, we're looking at stock price data and my slicer on the left side, I've selected the Tesla stock price and we can see that the Tesla stock is highlighted in red. If I switch this to the Netflix stock price, we'll see that highlighting change. And as a last example, if I select the Apple stock price, we'll see a different highlighted series. The idea for this video comes directly from a subscriber request. Full disclosure, this is a little bit of a hack because by default you can't dynamically highlight a line chart series, so I had to get a little bit creative for this one. Last thing before we jump into it, if you do like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It is the best way to show your support for the channel and helps me continue making Power BI content. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into a blank file. I've loaded in the raw data here in my single stocks table. Let's take a look at the data view. We have several different tickers of data. We have the date, and then we have the open, high, low, and close price and volume. We're only gonna focus on this close price column. You can see I've actually created a close price measure just to make this a little bit easier, just some of that stock's close. And just as a reminder, if you do wanna download this PBIX, make sure you check out the accompanying blog post down in the description. So let's go ahead and go to the report canvas. And let's start by adding a simple line chart directly on the canvas here. I'm gonna take my close price measure, put it in the values, and put in the date for the axis. And then finally, let's throw in our ticker in the legend. So right off the bat, we're gonna see multiple different tickers of data split up by date. And right here, you might notice that you're not actually able to conditionally format any of the series in this line chart. If we go to the formatting options and go to data colors, we'll see that there are no conditional formatting options. We only have the option to set a static color for these series. So this is why we have to get a little bit creative in order to set up the conditional formatting. So firstly, I'm gonna change all of these individual series to gray. So in the data colors, let's just turn them into a nice gray color. It might be better done with a theme to turn all these primary colors to gray, but I'm going to click through each individual one. So now that they're all gray, this is actually going to serve as the backdrop for the main piece of this trick. So this is always gonna be in the background here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a slicer full of the tickers to give us the ability to select a single ticker. We could simply take our ticker column and throw it in a slicer, but I'm actually going to separate it out to new table. And I'm gonna call this tickers and set this equal to values of my ticker column. And I'm gonna throw that in a slicer and let's size that a little bit better. And real quick, I'm going to make this single select. So you only have the option to select a single ticker. And in the modeling view, we will see there's no relationship set up between our new tickers table and the original stocks table, so that any selection in this slicer will not affect this visual here. And now here's where the trick gets really interesting. I need to copy this visual and paste it. We're actually going to layer two visuals on top of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my closing price and my ticker and just leave this kind of blank line chart here. Instead, I'm gonna create a new measure. I'm gonna call this selected ticker price. I'm simply going to create a variable to get my selected ticker. I'm gonna set that equal to select value of my ticker column from my ticker table, my disconnected table. And let's return, calculate my close price measure and simply set it equal to where my stock ticker equals my selected ticker. So this is going to get our close price of our selected ticker from that slicer. Let's go ahead and throw this in the values. So as you can see, I've selected Microsoft. This is the Microsoft price. Here's the Tesla price, Netflix, for example. So now I'm going to click on this new chart we created and let's go to the formatting and let's make the background transparent. At this point, I just wanna throw this one on top of this one. So let me go ahead and click on our background one and let's take a look at the positioning. So general, X position is 370, Y position is 106. I'm gonna make that an even 100. So now let's just put the top one in the same position. So 370, 100. So now you can see one is on top of the other. It doesn't look that good. The scaling is completely different. And we see the blue line that's on top does not line up with any of the lines down below. So that's a problem. So we just need to make sure that the scaling is always the same for these two visuals. And it's actually pretty easy to do. The first thing that I'm going to do is I need to make sure that all of our measures kind of have the same formatting. For example, one is a currency and one is not. So I need to make sure that all of our measures have currency. So let's go ahead and change that to a dollar. Okay, that looks good. Close price, it's already a currency. So that's good. We just need to create two more measures here. I just need to grab the max price 
And that's simply max x of our stocks table and our close price measure. So this is going to grab the maximum price of any of our stocks for this specific date. Let's throw that in our top visual, max price. And let me change the coloring to make it stand out a little bit. So max price, I wanna make this one orange real quick. So this orange is the max price of any stock at this point in time. This doesn't have to be the same stock the entire time. For example, this orange line up until where it meets with the blue is actually Netflix stock. And then it turns into Tesla stock, which is the max price at this point in time. We're gonna do the exact same thing to grab the minimum price. So new measure, we'll call this min price and change max X to min X. And we'll throw that in as well. So minimum price goes here and we can leave that one as orange as well. So oppositely, this is simply the minimum price at any point in time. You can see that it was successful in setting the Y axis scale to be the same because we're always going to have the same max value and min value for these two visuals. Let's just make sure that everything is in a currency just so it lines up nicely. And after doing that, we see our Y axis looks perfect. At this point, I'm going to get rid of my legends for both of these visuals. So I'm gonna to go to the selection pane. Let's click on each of these here. I want to click on the top one and let's get rid of our legend. And for the bottom one, let's get rid of our legend as well. So it's still lining up. For our top one, we do not need to show the min and max prices as lines. We can simply hide those. So let's click on the top one. Let's go to shapes and customize series. For max price, let's change the stroke width to zero. So that line is effectively going to go away when we make that zero. There we go. And for the min price, let's do the exact same thing. And let's go to data colors. So our selected ticker price is blue. Let's make it red so it really stands out. And if we hover over the visual, the tooltips show that we still have these orange data markers for the min and max price. So we can change the min and max price to white so it hides it a little bit better. And that was good. So we still have the min and max lines on here, but it's really just not showing. Uh, we're only showing that selected ticker price. At this point, we can select whatever we want. And we're actually done with the trick. It's looking pretty good. The only other thing that I'd like to do personally is I want to hide some of this text because it is overlapping. Let's go ahead and click on the bottom one now. And let's simply search for color. We wanna make everything on the bottom show as white. So it still will be there to set the proper sizing, but it'll just show white so it won't actually show up. Uh, so let's change all of the things on the x-axis to be white. And let's change our y-axis color to be white and our title color to be white. And we see it's going away. So let's go ahead and click off of it. It's looking a lot better. And let's do the exact same thing for our title. So let's search for color one more time. And where is title? Let's see data colors. There we go, there's title. Let's make that font color white as well. So it looks a lot better and we are done with the trick. The last thing I might recommend doing that we're not going to do in this video is setting up a report page tooltip. You can still see the min and max price in the tooltip, uh, but if you use a report page tooltip, you can make them see whatever you want. So at this point, we are completely done. We have our ticker slicer that we can select any of these tickers and dynamically highlight a specific series in this visual. So if you like this video, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out some of my training over at training.bielite.com, the link is down in the description. We offer a free seven day trial for you to check out the courses before purchasing. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.